Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker today. Some of you may remember when we came to this meeting, the meeting here last time, uh, some members from the ABLE, which was previously Nottingham Association of School Business Managers, came um, and they recommended a lady to me for a keynote speaker called Pam Burrows. Uh, Pam contacted me after the meeting and I was absolutely thrilled that she agreed to be able to come and uh, speak for us today. I'm sure, uh, you, like the, me, the rest of you all be feeling the strain. It's getting towards the end of term, the end of the year, and I'm absolutely sure that Pam's going to give us the pick me up that we all need. So I'm sitting in this big office on a big chair that goes round and round. The next door is a secretary. And she's my secretary, and it's my office, and it's my big desk, and it's my big chair that swizzles round. And I'm 24 years old, but I feel like I'm eight, going, oh God, somebody's going to find out soon that I shouldn't have got this job. Anybody ever felt like that? <laughs> Never felt like, oh, hang on a minute, somebody's going to come along soon and say, I don't think so, do you? When you get the, uh, you get the, the phone call that you've got the job, and you think, Surely not, surely not. Or, you know, where you didn't even go for the job itself, you just kind of get moved into a role and you go, I really don't know what I'm doing here. You felt that? Yeah. Is it pleasant? No. Does it make you feel like a complete superstar and confident? No. It makes you doubt. It makes you doubt yourself. It makes you think that you can't do stuff. And. That's one of the things I want to talk about in this time that we've got together. And it's all about the fact that you are amazing, fabulous, confident, and competent. So why don't you feel like that all of the time? Now, if there is somebody in the room that feels like that all of the time, I really want to interview you, write a book, and become a millionaire on how you do that. Because even though what I work with is helping organisations to reduce stress and raise confidence and increase well-being in general, I still have days where I'm on the sofa going, I can't do it, I'm not sure I'm clever enough, and all of those things. So um, understanding why we have those days or those moments, why we have that time where we're swinging round on the chair going, I feel like I'm eight, who gave me this responsibility? Or, who gave me this responsibility? I really don't want it. Um, those moments can be uh, a make or break, really, to your own well-being, your own mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, and, uh, and so that's what we're, we're going to be having a look at. So, um, the first thing I want to do, actually, is to uh, show you a very short video. I'm going to show you a slightly longer video later, and it will all piece together. Um, and it might be something that you've already seen, because it's from the movie The Greatest Showman. Anybody, a quick show of hands, who's seen The Greatest Showman? Oh, quite a few of you, excellent. Um, and uh, it's just a short snippet from one of the songs. I went to see the film and I was like, oh my God, I don't need to do my job anymore. I will just take this film into every organisation and say, just watch this film, you're going to feel great. Um, but, uh, but, but actually, feeling good every day, feeling confident, um, being your full competent self, uh, takes a, a, a bit more, uh, a few more techniques than that. So I'm going to teach you those too. So I'm going to show you this short video. And... Um, if you recognise it, uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. If you've never seen it before, I want you to notice uh, the words. If you haven't seen the film yet, go see it. I don't get any commission for saying that. I just, I just think it's great. It's a good spirit uplifting um, film to watch. So why am I showing you that? Well, it's because uh, there are times when I think probably you've got up in the morning, or you've listened to a song, or you've had a call with a friend and you go, yeah, this is me, I can do this, I'm going to nail it. Um, when you have you know, a chat with a friend just before an interview or before a difficult meeting and they remind you how fabulous you are and you have those days when you feel like that. And uh, every day is like that, isn't it? Mm, no, wouldn't it be great? So what is it that happens on those other days? So I'm going to get you to do a little experiment and um, this involves uh, standing up and joining in. So I'm diving you right into your favourite thing to do, you know, when you're at a conference and you're feeling a little bit, ooh, what's going to happen next? I'm going to dive you right into the stuff you hate to do. Um, and um, 
I'll explain what it is um, because what we're, what we're looking at here and what I'm going to show you um, a part of because we've, we've uh, got less than an hour to do this but a part of my model which is the care model and the first letter of that is C which stands for compassion. So we're going to test your compassion. I'm not going to waste my time or your time talking to you about being compassionate to other people. Because I suspect that you spend quite a lot of your time going, it's okay, you can do this. Don't worry about it, I've got you back. No, you're really good at it, really, really. Look, you made a mistake, don't worry. Um, who would admit you do quite a lot of that? Yeah, you piece people back together, you dust them off, you send them back out. And do you do that for yourself? that's what we're talking about so we can all get better at this even me even though this is what I go around the country talking about you can all get better at doing this so we're going to have a little experiment and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little test of your strength now in order to um, show you what I want you to do uh, I need a happy volunteer to come up here and uh, and help me to do this uh, now what I know happens uh, when you go to some kind of public event like this, um, perhaps with people that you don't know in a strange room and all of that kind of thing, and you don't know what's going to happen next, but when somebody says, I want to volunteer, you think to yourself, oh my God, I really hope it's me. Yeah? No? 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 Okay. Um, well, I thought that might be the case, so I was going to say, I'm going to count to three and the first person to put their hand up, I'm just going to have to pick the first one, um, because I can't have everybody do it, because it just wouldn't work that way. Um, but, um, but nevertheless, let's give that a go. So I'm going to count to three, and then whoever would like to join in, and there's a prize involved, by the way, you know, it could be, it could be a foreign holiday, it might not be, but it could be. Um, it could be a new Mercedes, it might not be, uh, but it will be lovely and it will be a lot of fun, your prize. Um, so, um, right, so I'm going to count to three and, uh, and the many people who would like to join in uh, can put their hand up. Okay, so one, two, three. Oh, look at that, look at that. A round of applause for that table, the whole table almost. Come on, come on, come on. And of course the applause is partly relief. That, uh, that they've not got picked up. Fantastic, fantastic. And your name is? Ruth. Ruth, right. She's up for it, isn't she? Can you tell? Everything about her body language. She did it before the prize, but that was it. <laughs> this, that's just nailed it for you. Fantastic. <laughs> I've set expectations too high. Okay, so we're going to test your strength. Now, have you got any aches, pains, or difficulties at the moment? No. no. okay. So which is stronger, your right arm or your left? Okay, so I want you to stick it straight out like that. Okay, okay and I'm going to come around this side, like this. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so um, all we're going to do is see what's your natural arm strength. Okay, and what I'd like you to do is to just notice how much uh, strength you think there is in Ruth's arm just by our body language. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to try and push it down. I want you to try and keep it where it is. <laughs> means business here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, right, we're ready. It's that power stunt. We've seen it in the, in the newspapers. Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a bit because there's some very interesting research about that. Okay, so I'm going to try and push it down. You're going to try and keep it there. Okay, ready? Steady, go. Is that a strong arm? Yeah. Yes, I think so. I think so. So put it down for us for a second. So, how could you tell? <laughs> the way I looked like I was going to burst a blood vessel. Yes, it is actually, let me tell you, if you couldn't tell, that is a very strong arm. Do you go to the gym, Ruth? I have small children. Ah, oh, small children. Yeah, yeah, he's slinging them on your hip, throwing them out the window. No, 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 that's not the thing to do. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some multitasking. I'm not going to make any gender stereotypes here, um, but uh, I'm glad it's you, Ruth. <laughs> So what we're going to do this time is, you're going to put your arm up in the same way, I'm going to try and push it down, you're going to try and keep it there, but this time you're going to gaze to the back of the room over the heads of your beautiful colleagues and, um, and you're going to say out loud some words to just kind of distract your muscles, okay? So uh, let's say for instance you say, 
Weak and feeble, weak and feeble. Over and over again, out loud. Okay, ready? Whilst gazing into the distance. So if you put your arm up, I'm going to try and push it down. You're going to try and keep it there. You're going to look and see if you can tell what happens. Okay? And um, are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, whenever you're ready with weak and feeble. Weak and feeble. Weak and feeble. Weak and feeble. <laughs> okay, um, put your arm down. Um, did you notice anything? <laughs> weak and feeble. What, what happened? You cheated. <laughs> Outrageous behaviour. So, um, what do you think was going on there? It, it took me by surprise because I wasn't focusing on what you were doing. Right, so it's the whole multitasking distraction yeah, thing yeah, going on. Yeah. Do you think that's what was going on? Well, we could do another little experiment here. We could test it by changing the words. Okay. Okay, so this time I want you to put your arm up. I'm going to try and push it down. You're going to try and keep it there. And this time you're going to say, easy. Strong and powerful. Strong and powerful. Do I say that twice? No. Right. <laughs> Especially if it makes you feel silly, don't do it. And what you're going to do is just watch. Just observe. See if you can see anything different. Okay, Ruth, whenever you're ready. Strong and powerful. Strong and powerful. Strong and powerful. Strong and powerful. Uh, you can put it down now. Did you notice anything? What do you think happened there? Because you were still looking over there and saying something. Distraction. What do you think happened? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's magic. That's what it is. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm really glad you said that. Um, anybody got any clues? Anybody else? Who, yeah. She was prepared. She was prepared. So we've done it through. This was the third time through. She's kind of, yeah. Anybody else got any ideas? she got her mindset on being strong. Now, if you would just wait there a moment, Ruth, because this lady here has just preempted something I'm going to be doing in a little moment, which is good answers get a prize. So I'm just... <laughs> okay. I'm just fertling about under here. Don't worry about a thing. Yes, here we are. Here you go. Fantastic. Right, because you're spot on. But... Uh, I don't want people to just believe you because, you know, who are you and I? We're just stars in the universe. We need some proof here. So let's do the whole thing again. Okay. Um, because then there's no surprises. You know what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So if you put your arm up, this is just what's, how strong is Ruth's arm. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, we can feeble. Strong and powerful? Strong and powerful, strong and powerful, strong and powerful. Oh, yeah. I'm so tempted to drop it on purpose. <laughs> Just to mess up the whole thing. So, what do you reckon now? Um, you're a hypnotist. <laughs> I am actually a qualified hypnotist. Um, but that wasn't what I was doing just here. I just hypnotised you all earlier to have a fabulous afternoon. But you didn't need to know about that. Um, so, um, so, so do you, you just think it's magic? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall I let you in on what's actually going on, Ruth? So I can sleep tonight. So you can sleep yes. tonight, yes. yes. Oh, you will sleep tonight. I've already sorted that out. <laughs> That's fine. Can you come and do that for my children as well? <laughs> that might cost you. Okay, so what we're talking about here is a, a little thing called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Anybody heard of NLP? Yeah? Okay, so some people haven't. NLP is really just a way of understanding how the mind works. What you see, hear, and feel on the inside impacts on how you react to the world on the outside. So we did a little trickery early on with some of the ladies who were getting up to speak, and I said to them, what is it you're imagining when you get up on stage? And what do you think the answers were? Do you think they were saying, I'm imagining having fabulous fun and being utterly confident on the stage. I can't wait. <laughs> do you think that's what they said? No. They were, I'm worried about forgetting what I'm going to say, and I'm worried about everybody walking out and just going, oh God, this is a waste of time. And what you're picturing in your mind's eye makes a difference to how you feel. So, you know when you've got that SLT meeting and there's somebody in it that you know is going to do that thing that they do and you're just going to have to say something about it, your heart starts to race because what you're picturing isn't, I'm going to be calm and assertive, I'm going to tell them what I need to tell them and they're going to go, yeah, okay. 
what you're picturing is a massive row, third world war, just complete carnage, losing your job, punching somebody, getting thrown out the building by the police, you know, you're, you're picturing, I, I want to never ever hear anybody say, well, what's the worst that could happen? Because then do you know what you do? You yeah. picture the worst thing yeah. that could possibly happen, and then what happens is your body reacts as if it's in that real stress situation. Your body goes, oh, we better get ready for that then. We better get some adrenaline going, and we better get some cortisol going. <coughs> and do you know the stress hormone cortisol, do you know one of the things it does? It gets you ready for fight or flight by slowing down your digestion, your immune system, your reproductive system, and loads of other stuff that isn't urgent if actually you're just about to punch the head teacher. <laughs> Which if that happens on a regular basis, not the punching bit, but the cortisol bit, um, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you poorly. It's going to be things like uh, irritable bowel syndrome and catching every cold under the sun and all of those things. Um, sorry, I've just gone way over into stress that we, we're not doing that today. Stop it. But here we are with one small example of what you're saying makes a difference to everything. So if what you're saying is, I'm going into that SLT meeting and it's going to be dreadful. Ooh, this is going to be hard. You're going to set yourself up feeling weak and feeble. Now, we could take Ruth, I'm not going to do this, but we could take Ruth to a laboratory, for instance, and we could get scientists to measure her arm strength. You know, they could like put probes and measure, I, I'm not very technical, but um, something. And they could say, Ruth's arm is this many strongs. You know, they're kind of this technical term. And, um, and they could say, that's how strong her arm is. And yet, when she changed the words, it changed the strength quite a lot, didn't it? Yeah. Quite, quite a big change. Even though that arm was still the same arm. So just imagine, what you say to yourself on a regular basis and how it might affect things that are less tangible than a muscle, like your confidence, your resilience, your immune system, your sense of stress or calm, all of those things and how you come across when you want to be your confident, fabulous self. So it's important that we get the message that what we say to ourselves has a huge impact. And this is where that C for compassion comes in because what you're saying in your head isn't just something you say in your head, it's affecting your health, your capacity to do the things you wanna to do, to feel confident, resilient, healthy, all of those things. So, have you got the message, Ruth? Yes. <laughs> so, do you want to promise? Yes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now, life has its ups and downs, and we all need to remember to play. So you've got a yo-yo. Yes. Okay, round of applause for Ruth, take a seat. Fantastic. Now, it's hopefully interesting to watch that happen, especially when you get somebody as fabulous as Ruth to demonstrate with. Um, but it's even more impactful and memorable if you actually physically have a go yourself. And sometimes when I do this with smaller groups, if there's an odd number, I join in. And even though I've done this so many times, when I'm going, oh my God, it just really works, doesn't it? That's incredible. And they look at me like, aren't you supposed to really believe in this? I'm like, yeah, but it's amazing. So I want you to have a go for that reason, because it sticks in your mind, and you can try it with your kids, you can try it with other members of your family, you can try it at school, you can do it in a staff meeting, because the message is, what is the message? That we're strong. Oh, fact, that deserves a prize. <laughs> that deserves a prize. Take me slightly less time this time. There's a stress ball with a smile. The stress balls have a smile on them for a very important reason, because when you smile, it sets off feel-good chemicals in the body, even if it's a fake smile. How mad's that? So, um, so if you're about to do something that you think might be a bit tricky, you could just <laughs> put on a grin. And you, now, don't do it while you're in the difficult meeting. But do do it. <laughs> do do it when you're on public transport, because you're two seats to yourself. You know, you can, <laughs> can sit back. Um, so yeah, just a little tip. So if you're thinking she's going to make us stand up, she's going to make us speak to somebody that we haven't met before. Oh, did I say that bit? I haven't said that. I haven't warned you a bit. So you're going to stand up, you're going to find somebody you haven't met before, or if you know everybody in the room, find somebody you haven't spoken to for a while. And you're going to get into a pair and you're going to do what Ruth has just done and what I've just done, which is to test their natural arm strength, 
Check first if they've got any aches or pains. It's just what's their natural arm strength today. It's not how hard can I push their arm to tip them over. <laughs> you should see this when I do this with kids. It's, okay, we're all dangling off each other like orangutans. That's very funny. Get back to it. I don't wear with kids very often. Um, so uh, you do that natural for them. Then get them to say weak and feeble and then test it. And then strong and powerful and test it again. And then swap over so you've both had a go. Now, we know that the amazing, fabulous, wonderful Louise who has created all of this, in fact created the group to start with and has carried all of that, is sitting there now with a poorly back. Aww. Yeah, because she's been putting her back into it for too long. See, these are the kind of things that happen. When you really need a break, but you're not taking a break, something breaks. So, uh, so if, if you do want to go, you can just do it very gently whilst sitting down or don't do it at all. So just check with each other, uh, health and safety, because I'm actually not insured. <laughs> well, not for stupidity. Okay, so uh, so just a few minutes to try this. Uh, do, it, do, do it to each other, take it in turns, stand up, find somebody you don't know, ready, steady, go. Go. <laughs> feeble but you're trying to think strong you will be stronger but you won't be as strong as you are when you're saying strong thinking strong you've got it all all your ducks in a row kind of thing and and again there's another piece of learning for us because how often are you saying one thing but you're feeling another you're like oh no that doesn't matter but inside you're going oh god that matters that matters so much to me yeah or you're saying uh, oh no i'm i'm not very you're thinking, I am really, but you know, my mum told me not to show off, not to be too big for me boots. And, uh, and those kind of uh, disconnects between what we're saying and what we really mean can again cause some problems with our confidence, our resilience and how we feel about stuff. So from now on, what I'd like you to do is to just notice what you're saying <coughs> to yourself in your own head. And what you need to be careful of is this. Now, you might have one of these. You can't have mine because I use it a lot. But you've probably got your own. And um, mine is red. <laughs> I used to have one that squeaked, but it, it was a bit harder and it hurt a bit. Because 
what we do with this is, um, right, let me just ask you a question first. Whoever has um, sent an email with an attachment, but not? <laughs> you just see it disappearing and you realise there's no attack. Quick show of hands, who's done that? Fantastic. Who has set out ten things to do in the day? You get to the end of the day and you've done five of them. Yeah, have you done that? Yeah, not bad? Yeah, yeah, because, because you've done seven things for everybody else that you didn't intend to do, could you just, do you get a lot of that? Could you just, could you just get the dead bird out of the playground? Have you seen my job description? Where on my job description does it say get your hand down the loo and unblock it? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, hopefully in a few years time people will get what school business, business, business leaders, business leaders are actually supposed to be doing, you know, actually, no, there's a few things here you're asking me to do that I shouldn't be doing. Um, so you're doing everything for everybody else, you're doing things that probably aren't in your job description, you're probably doing work that you're not even getting paid for because it's after time and all of those things. And when those things happen, you get one of these out. Because you say to yourself, oh, I can't believe I sent it without the attachment. <laughs> and it was bound to be to that one person who is going to harm my credibility that I didn't send the attachment. So now I've got to send that other message to go, oh, sorry, actually, it's the attachment. And while you're doing that, you're going, I can't believe I'm so stupid. <laughs> and you get to the end of the day, you set out ten things to do. You've only managed five of them. But you've also done seven things for everybody else. What do you focus on? The five you did do? The five you didn't do? Oh, I can't believe I didn't get all that done. I'm going to have to do more tomorrow. I can't. Ten things plus the seven, that's 17. I'm not very good at maths, but I know that much. Those 17 things were never humanly possible. And I know that a school business leader is slightly superhuman. You know, you've kind of got more capacity than the average ordinary human being, you know. But even so, you know, you can't manage to do that many things in one day ever in the first place, setting yourself those things. But then to beat yourself up for not having done that doubly superhuman thing is a little bit crazy. So um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember MC Hammer. So uh, his phrase used to be hammer time. Yes, I don't have the trousers for it. Um, but I want you to change that phrase and think of it as now hammer down. Stop it. Stop beating yourself up. Stop beating yourself up for not being quite as superhuman as you were hoping to be because you're already amazing. You're already doing 60 trillion fabulous things every day, some of which you won't even notice. So we need to put the hammer down, but there's a little bit of a health and safety warning with that because there's a little trap you could fall into and it goes like this. Oh, I forgot the email attachment. Oh, stupid, stupid person. Oh, wait a minute. I went on that fabulous conference and that fabulous speaker, Pam, she said not to beat myself up. And I've done it. I'm so stupid. I've been beating myself up. I really shouldn't be doing that. She told us not to. I'm really rubbish at this. So, so what you need to do is, you notice you're beating yourself up, and then you go, uh -huh, I've noticed I'm beating myself up there, I will put the hammer down, hammer down. And I will instead say to myself, you're doing the best you can, dog, don't worry about it. Or whatever phrase works for you. But something positive, something even neutral, like, it's okay, I've got this. And, uh, and to just move on, because guess what? The beating up doesn't help. In fact, it suppresses your immune system, it harms your well-being, it harms your confidence, and it harms your resilience. The very thing that you might have got into a habit of doing to try and push yourself and drive yourself forward might be the one thing that's actually holding you back. So be nice to you. Now, I'm not going to spend any time at all telling you what kind of things you could be saying to yourself instead because all I need to tell you is one magic trick. Think about what you might say to somebody else. Because I suspect that you know exactly what you would say to somebody else who's forgot the attachment, not got to, around to all their to-do list, done something a bit daft, forgotten to do something, done something that didn't work out quite right, or whatever it is. 
you would know what to say to that person to make them feel okay, to buoy them back up, to make them feel confident and competent again. <coughs> so all you need to know really is, what would I say to somebody else and turn it towards yourself? Some of that kindness could be just what you need to make it through the tough times that you're getting through at the moment. And let's face it, we were talking on the table during lunchtime, it ain't going to be any time soon that things get, you know, more resourced for you guys, is it? It's not like you're just getting through the next few days and weeks and then there'll be some new budgets and some new resources and extra staff and it's all just going to get easier. It's not, it's not going to happen anytime soon, is it? I'm sorry, I don't usually do bad news like that, you know, I'm not negative generally speaking. But what that means is that if you've been pushing on, working harder, trying harder, pulling all the stops out, saying, well, this is a tough time, this is a busy time, this is, you know, it's exceptional, I've got to do all these things. You need to just look ahead slightly and go, well, hang on, when, when does it stop then? When do I get to go and take a little break? Because if there isn't a gap like that coming anytime soon, you need to start thinking about how you pace yourself. And as I say, I know that you are superheroes with superpowers, but even superheroes have to have some time to recuperate and recharge. So, conscious of the time, because I could do a couple of days or, you know, let's go away for a week. There's loads of stuff I'd love to do with you. So uh, I do need to, to keep my eye on the time. Um, so, these words, um, I need to tell you about my shoes, by the way. I don't know if, uh, can you see, can everybody really see my shoes? They are velvet with satin ribbons and sparkly bits on. I'll just do a quick high kick. This could be dangerous. There you go. Oh, there's my shoes. Um, now, this is a new thing for me, this whole shoe. Well, not shoes in general. That would be a bit weird at my age. But um, in general. Uh, specifically, flat shoes. Uh, so I've been a speaker now for uh, about 27, 28 years. And uh, often I'm speaking at conferences like this or sometimes on a big stage. And the bigger the gig, the bigger my heels used to be. <laughs> oh, I've got to be very confident today. And, uh, you know, if it's a few thousand people, I think, way, I've got to be on my tiptoes. These have got to the biggest heels ever, ever, ever. Uh, because there was something about high heels and confidence for me. And uh, apparently it makes your legs look longer as well. So, so that, was, that was the thing. Um, and they made my back ache. They gave me blisters. They meant that I was teetering about, looking a bit unsafe. Do you know, high heels originally were only worn by men. Go figure. And they were to show that you didn't have far to walk because you were so rich. And then you see women in town teetering about all night on very high heels. You think, it's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> And what I realised in uh, one of my therapy sessions, I recommend therapy to everybody, um, was that actually it went all the way back to childhood when my six foot something tall brother used to take the nick out of me. And he used to have a, a very good line in making me feel small is stupid. In fact, he used to call me doll cue um, because he said that's where I would end up. I probably wouldn't be able to get a job because I was a bit stupid. And um, I earned more than him. That's, that's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel like that. <laughs> shh, shh, don't say I said that. Um, but um, yeah, so, so I was always trying to appear taller because that made me feel uh, more mature, more professional, more confident. But then I realised that actually it's okay to be five foot one and a half. And um, I'm just being accurate. I'm not being like, that half is really important to me. It's not like that. Um, five foot one and a half. And um, I mean, my mum was five foot two. It's not fair. You're supposed to be taller at least than your parents, aren't you? But she's shrinking now, so that's kind of good. No, I <laughs> not Sounds really mean. Um, so um, I started wearing flat shoes. And the first time I did it, it was really weird. I was like, I don't feel like I'm going to work because I'm not in pain. <laughs> Surely work is painful. And, um, and I started, but I thought they, they've got to be something, something about them. They can't be plain flat shoes. It's got to be. So they are very glitzy, uh, which means that I've got two boxes full of very high heels going on eBay soon, if you want to look out, if you've got very small feet. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, the good news was I had to go out and buy all new shoes. <laughs> so I've got a whole range of uh, velvety, sparkly shoes now, and they make me very happy. Now, um, that might have been very interesting for you to hear all about my shoes. 
Um, but hopefully you can see my point. I spent years and years and years trying to pretend I wasn't the height that I was, trying to pretend I was somebody else, trying to feel like I was somebody else, because tall people always seem to be more elegant and clever and uh, have gravitas in a room. And uh, there are still moments now when I stand next to, for instance, Anne-Marie, and I'm like, wow, that would be fab. It's not. You see, that's the thing, isn't it? For you, not necessarily so. So I'm wearing my flat shoes. So what's your equivalent of flat shoes? Or rather, what's your equivalent of my height? What is it about you that you think is not quite what you would want it to be if you could choose? And it might be the kind of standard strands of discrimination around, um, around race, sexism, disability, sexuality, those kinds of things. Or it might be something about feeling like, well, I haven't got a degree, or I haven't got this, or I haven't got that. But I want to introduce you to a little acronym that you might like. And the first one is OPN. And what I mean by OPN is the root of a lot of this stuff. And it stands for other people's nonsense. And the second acronym, I do have to apologise because there is about to be a rude word spoken in this hallowed place. It's not my shit. <laughs> other people's stuff, what they think, it's not your stuff. If they don't think you're clever enough, tall enough, pretty enough, thin enough, fat enough, muscular enough, whatever enough, I'm here to tell you, officially, you're already enough. You are exactly who you're meant to be. You are how you're meant to be. And yeah, you might want to learn something new. You might want to, go to, you might want to change something or improve something or whatever. But even right now, before you do any of those things, you're already exactly who you're meant to be. You're the person you were created to be, and as Oscar Wilde says, be yourself, everyone else is taken. So I'm not about to try and become Anne-Marie. Those would be massive heels if I was trying to be Anne-Marie. But even with those heels, I'd be losing out on who I'm meant to be and what I'm meant to bring to the world. So let's just have a look at uh, what I'm talking about here. This is the A in the care model, and it stands for acknowledgement. Acknowledgement of what you do, who you are, and what you're good at. How do you respond to a compliment? I'm going to pick on somebody. I'm going to pick on... I'm going to, I'm going to pick on Ruth again. I'm going to pick on this lady. People who sit at the back love to be complimented. There's something about the way she started to just cry and try and close down like this. You look lovely today. Do I? Do I? Surprise! She actually said thank you. Yay! And she managed to almost catch the stress ball. Because often with a compliment, we say things like, oh, this whole thing. It's from Matalan. It's a charity shop. I got it in the sale. Deserves a prize. Deserves a prize. We bat it off. Now, if it was a huge bouquet of beautiful flowers and I said, here you go, would you go, oh, I don't want them. But with a compliment, we do bat them off. We go, oh, do you know? Or somebody says, oh, it was amazing what you did last week. You've really made a difference to the school. Or well, you've taken a load off my to-do list. Like, that's fantastic. The way you did that, and you go, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. Inside, you might be going, yeah, I think it was rather special. <laughs> Or inside you might be going, oh, well, it was nothing really. I'd, it wasn't very hard for me. Now, here's the thing. It wasn't very hard for you because it's what you're meant to do in the world. Somebody else would look at that very thing and go, wow, I couldn't do that. If somebody looked at your life right now, including all the bits that you think aren't quite right, you know, like that drawer in the kitchen that you put everything in, you think, I need to sort that drawer out, really. Or that back bedroom that really needs decorating, you know, or I've got some grass growing out of the guttering. Oh, I don't know, do you get grass in your guttering? <sighs> I wasn't planning to tell you that, I feel a little bit embarrassed now. So that's kind of above and beyond um, not maintaining the house. Um, so even those things, you know, somebody, somebody would 
give their right arm to have a house, that, to have grass in the gutter. Do you know what I mean? And it's not that thing about, you know, oh, be grateful, there's a lot of people worse off than you are. It's not about that. It's about saying what I've got. What have I got? Including about who you are. Now, acknowledging who you are and what goes well in any one day, including you set out 10 things to do in the day, you only manage five, but you also manage seven of other people's things. I think that makes 12. So you sit down at night and you go, I did 12 things today. I did five things off my impossible list that was never humanly possible. And I've managed some other things as well. Fantastic, well done me. Guess what happens then? The adrenaline and the cortisol, which are the stress hormones, ebb away. And you get endorphins and serotonin, which are the drug of choice. Because it makes you feel nice. And they are in chocolate also. <laughs> so if you have been craving chocolate lately, guess what you're not getting enough of? You're not getting enough acknowledgement. I'm not saying that it will make you not want chocolate, because that would be a bit of a tall order, really. Um, but often we go for those cravings because we're feeling a little bit empty inside, feeling a little bit lost, a bit tired, a bit unappreciated. Well, guess what? You're the one who's with you 24-7, seeing the amazing things that you do. So you're the one who could say, do you know what? That was good today. In fact, I was rather fabulous. Do you think you could? Just have a think about yesterday. One fabulous thing you did yesterday. And it might be amazing, something somebody else would go, oh. or it might be something really small, but for you, like, yeah, glad I got that nailed. Could be anything. And when you start to think of those things and get into the habit of acknowledging what you're good at, it improves everything about your well-being. So, Celebrate them, the big things, the small things, the home things, the work things, but especially the everyday things, the things that you just have to do anyway. You could come back from the supermarket and go, I was a superhero at the supermarket. I killed no one and I got all the food. I forgot the thing I'd gone for, but I got all these other things that were a really good bargain. And you notice the things that are good. And again, I'm not gonna show you how to do this because you do it for other people all the time. Somebody says, oh, well, I've done this, and I didn't manage to do that bit. And you go, no, no, but let's look at the bit you did do. How fabulous is that? It's a painting of a guinea pig. It's fabulous. And they go, no, no, it's a horse. And you go, well, actually, it's a great horse too. So you do it for other people all the time, acknowledging the good stuff. So do more of that for yourself. So I want to introduce you to uh, Howard Gardner. Oh, a quick show of hands, actually. Anybody heard of Howard Gardner already? No? Oh, fabulous. That's great. I love showing you new things, it's exciting. You could use this in school. I've used this with kids who've been excluded. And, uh, and one of the lads that, uh, that was there, who uh, got arrested later in the day, but that was nothing to do with me. Um, that was gonna happen anyway. But he said, Pam, I've had an epiphany. And this is what his epiphany was about. Howard Gardner um, was all about not asking the question, how smart are you? which is about IQ and academia and all of that. Because IQ is just a way of measuring that somebody invented at some point. It's not natural to human beings. It's something somebody measured. And what Howard Gardner says, well, there's all these other ways to be clever. And academia can just be a part of that. It's not like, well, you're either clever or you're going to do the woodwork. <laughs> That's how it was at my school. You can either be in the top maths class or you can do a bit of painting over here. And it was, it was one or the other, you know, they kind of, yeah, we're saying it's a vocational study, make feel good about it, means you're a bit daft. But Howard Gardner's saying, no, let's put it all together, because all of these things are important, and actually you were created with a unique mix of these things. So, um, eight intelligences, the first one is being word smart. So you might be able to write poetry, or you might be a big reader, you might love writing, you might love speaking. You could be word smart and be completely illiterate. You can be word smart and be dyslexic. It's about actually having a feel for words. You might be logic smart, which is around the numbers and uh, mathematics and science stuff. That might just come naturally to you. You might be nature smart. You might be interested in gardening or ecology or planets or the world. 
all of those things, being green, that might be fascinating and natural to you. It just comes naturally to be fascinated in it, curious about it and get good at it. You might be picture smart, so that might be about art, it might be about craft, it might be about things like maps, being able to work out where you are in the world. Or are you like me, we have to turn the map the other way up because that's the way you're going. It doesn't make sense that way up. You do? Yeah, that is a surprise. <laughs> Just because it makes me feel better. Turning maps upside down makes more sense that way. Um, picture smart um, or body smart so that's about being physical it might be sport or it might be dance um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be the best thing you know I love to dance I look like a complete loon but I love to dance and um, and moving my body makes me feel good um, so all of these things we need all of these things but some of them you're going to find is your particular talent the next one is music smart so you might be able to make music play an instrument might be able to sing a tune Sorry, that was still a bit of lunch there. <laughs> you might be food smart, but that isn't one of them. Um, and uh, music smart, that might be your thing. That, uh, that you understand the tone and the flow of music. You might be able to write it or sing uh, or do all of those things. You might be people smart. You might be able to walk into a room. Let's say this is a room over here. You walk into a room and you know that something just cracked off. <laughs> it's not okay. There's a bit of a feeling about it. Somebody's upset somebody. We know that there's no eye contact. What's going on here? You might equally walk into a room and go, oh, wow, this, what a lovely feeling this meeting has. How do you know that? You haven't actually gone round and touched people. That would be bad behavior. Probably a policy against that somewhere. Not in the GDPR policy. <laughs> I had to use the G word at least once just to hear the groan. Oh, don't you love it? I tell you what, I'm dead chuffed. I'm dead chuffed because I'm getting loads of emails. I was a bit annoyed to start with, but now I'm dead chuffed. I'm getting these emails saying, if you don't answer this very last call to stay on our mailing list, you won't hear from us ever again. It's your last chance. I'm going, fantastic. I'm going to have an empty inbox. It's going to be great. So I'm loving those, especially as the news is now out that you don't need to do that. You can just say, here's my privacy policy, and they just all stay on the list. So I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. Anyway, what's I talking about? Oh, yeah. So people smart. You walk into a room and you understand what's going on. Or you might be self-smart. You might be self-aware. You notice what you're doing. You notice when you're not okay. You know what you need to do about that. That's something that's fascinated me for many years which is why I'm so interested in helping other people to be self-smart, to be able to look at themselves and go, what's up right now and what can I do about that? You might feel sad, you might feel nervous, you might feel stressed. That's the first part, the awareness, but then what do you do with that? So I've got loads of free resources for you after today. Um, some of them are on a hidden web page that I'm gonna be telling you about, but also there's loads of stuff on YouTube that I do that you can just access be able to switch off and uh, be you and feel confident and there's my favorite one actually is a little video you'll find it on youtube and it's called um right good talking to it's kind of a bit yorkshire do you like that right good talking to I'm not even from yorkshire i don't know why i keep slipping into that i just love yorkshire um and um and it's basically like a good friend you know like you're going for an interview and you're going oh i'm going to be rubbish at that you've got the you've got your hammer out. i'm going to be rubbish at this i can't do it I'm, oh, I've... <laughs> so it's a video it's me talking to you through the screen going come on you can do it you can do it and we all need that sometimes in fact i'm gonna to have to tell you this now because there was a little gap and you're gonna wonder what it is i'm going on about but in fact i played it to myself <laughs> Because <laughs> I really needed it. And I thought, this is a bit weird. It's kind of like cannibal or so. I don't know what the word would be, but it was a bit weird to watch yourself telling yourself, but it made me cry. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's lovely. <laughs> Doing myself no favours in terms of credibility at all. Um, but at school, who made you feel smart? Because at school, I was quite good at English because I loved words, but I was rubbish at homework because I was busy being people smart. And I wasn't very good at maths because it's just not my thing, but my brother was, so he made me feel stupid. And now I do things that he couldn't do in a month of Sundays, and he does things I couldn't do in a month of Sundays. 
So what is it that you're meant to be doing? That you are doing? That you are doing well? But that about which you go, oh, that, no, it's nothing. I want you to celebrate those things because it makes you strong and it makes you well and it stops you getting too stressed. And it stops you trying to be the kind of superhero that does everything for everybody because you're trying to prove you're good enough. Here's the thing, you're already good enough. So, uh, we're not going to spend time on the R and the E of, uh, of the care model because uh, I wanted to focus on the C and the A from the chat I'd had with Louise about what might meet your needs today in just a short uh, time. Um, but I will be writing a book on the whole of the model. So um, if you want to sign up to my um, Monday <laughs> GDPR proof uh, email list, um, I send out a little motivational message every Monday morning just to give you a little boost, a little reminder. Uh, and there'll be information on there eventually about the book uh, that you'll be able to get so that you understand the full model of care and how you can really boost you and the people around you. But the art is for reality. And I've kind of mentioned this a bit. It's about time management, energy management, management, resources management. It's about being realistic about what's possible. Because there's uh, these things called drivers that send us out of reality. Things where we're trying to be perfect, be strong, hurry up, to please others, to try hard. These things were um, named in as far back as 1975 by a psychologist called Kayla. And it's all about how we think we've got to be more than and that's when you get exhausted. It's when you cram too much in your diary and you, um, you go outside of what's really possible. And that's because you are a superhero. And uh, I don't know if you prefer this outfit or this outfit. You can, you can choose. Um, but you need to wear your shiny pants on the inside because if everybody sees your shiny pants, they're gonna keep going, oh, could you just, and will you? And you're gonna always say yes. Um, so you need to be careful of that. And the E is for energy. So what are you doing each and every day to put a little energy back? And that's twofold for me. The first is around joy. What are the joyful things? Because when we get busy and stressed, we stop doing the things that are our things, our things that make us happy. You need to put those back in your diary. And then the other thing is the basics. So for instance, do you eat when you're hungry? Do you drink when you're thirsty? Do you sleep when you're tired? Do you even go to the loo when you want to go to the loo? Or do you keep thinking, I'll do this first and then I'll go, and then I'll go, and then I'll go, oh! And then you can hardly lock the cubicle door because you've left it, so, yeah. I think it's a girl thing, mostly. Sometimes when I say this, the men are going, why would you not go to the loo when you want to go to the loo? What a weird thing to do. How strange. How weird. Um, so, yes, do you even get a, a quick show of hands? Who ends up most of the time having a hot drink that you actually drink once it's gone cold? Oh, do you know? Let this be the last time. Have a hot drink while it's hot. If you want it hot, you know. If you're having a frappe, that's fine. I don't even you know what a frappe is. I haven't planned to say that. So, energy is really important. And uh, here's a little bit of Maldives for you. I thought I'd take you on holiday this afternoon. So as you watch the screen, and as you watch the ebb and flow of that sea, I've just talked about going for a week, so that's probably bad planning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, there will be a break soon. Just think about how many times a day do you have a moment, and it can just be 30 seconds of mindfulness where you just slow down, take a breath, notice what's gone well, notice how marvellous you are and how good you are at what you're doing and then take a moment to carry on. Because if you don't take those moments, they disappear. And you get to the end of the day, you feel completely frazzled. And do you ever get to the end of the day and you go, I've not stopped all day, but I don't know what I've done. <laughs> Where's the time? <sighs> so let, let this be the last time that happens too. Because if you're starting to acknowledge what it is you're achieving each time, and you get that sense of, yeah, I did that. I filed that thing. I bounced that email. I uh, closed that door so I could get something done. Remembered the attachment. Do you think that deserves a prize? Oh, yeah. I think so. Here we go. <laughs> Score! Let's celebrate the good things! <laughs> well, 
I didn't throw it particularly accurately. Now, um, I've got to, uh, I've got to shut up soon, and uh, I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to hide behind here and they won't find me. No, <laughs> that wasn't what I was doing. Um, but I'd like you to um, take something, take one thing out of that bag, um, each of you, and then pass the bags back so that everybody gets one thing out of this bag. Don't do anything with it just now, just choose which one you want, and then I'll tell you what to do with it in just a moment. Okay, so, think about your energizers. Think about what you might put into your day to feel good. And remember to be compassionate to yourself, to acknowledge what's going well, be realistic with the time and the energy and the resources that you've got, and to get your energy. So, how might uh, I help you from now on? One of the things is you might sign up for a Monday message. I've got some sheets on there that people can use to sign up, so I'll put those round. Um, in fact, I'll put them on the middle table when we have the break, and you can sign up for those. Um, if you've got the back, can you send it back? So I've already got one. Thank you. Lovely. Um, I've got a free app, so if you look for Pam Burrows People Booster on Google or Apple, I've got a free app, and it's not an app, or, an app like you play games on. It's kind of like a library of all the... The resources that I've got on the internet. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn um, and there is uh, specifically for you there is a school business managers Facebook group, private group, so you have to kind of knock on the door to get in as it were um, and it's called School Business Managers Rock so if you look up that on Facebook uh, School Business Managers Rock and uh, there's school business managers from all over the country um, who just chat on and go, what are you doing about GDPR? <laughs> <laughs> and, have you been asked to take on responsibilities that aren't really yours? And, uh, and everybody helps each other, or somebody's going for a new job and everybody helps. I don't do a lot in that group, actually, everybody, because they're the ones with the expertise and it's a, it's a great supportive group. Um, I've also written a little ebook called Burnout Buster, and uh, it's only 99p on... Um, uh, Amazon as a little downloadable ebook, and it's it's uh, 42 signs that you might be about to burn out, 42 things to do about it. You can take the quiz on the website, which is pamburrows.com forward slash quiz, so that you can take the quiz to see how close you are to burnout. Um, and this is the hidden web page. So if you put pamburrows.com and then forward slash goodies, there's a web page there which has some videos, some audios, and some stuff that you might find useful, and also the ebook for free. <laughs> but it's in PDF form on there. So if you don't want to spend 99p on Amazon, then uh, you can get it for free on there. Uh, and you can join the, S uh, the uh, SDL Facebook group. Right, so um, I've just got uh, a little bit of uh, video that I want to show you. Are we all right for time if I just go over a little bit? Because um, I want to show you this last video, which is also from um, uh, Greatest Showman, and um, but it's behind the scenes. <laughs> Are you really pleased about that? <laughs> it's like, yay! <laughs> and it's from the rehearsals. Now, um, quick show of hands, who thinks when you were watching the bearded lady sing that song at the very start of my talk that she looked confident? Quick show of hands. Did she look confident? Yeah, she's got it all going on. Bustier going on. Dress, the beard, the hair, that don't you mess with me look. And now we see the actress. Do you think the actress was confident? Let's watch this and then I'll go, I've got a question for you afterwards. Cool. <laughs> this is you. This is who you are meant to be. I'm not meant to be here in eight, eight inch high heels. I'm meant to be here at five foot one going, this is who I am. And I've got a fascination for people and helping them feel better. I've worked out how to do that for myself. I'd like to help you to do that too. So that's what I'm meant to be. I'm not meant to be the clever academic. I'm not meant to be the person who can do a spreadsheet. And he does that. I, I get other people to do the bits I can't do. But who are you? So this question, who do you think you are? It sometimes sounds a bit negative, doesn't it? Like, who do you think you are? Coming in here, think you're all that. And I prefer this question, which is, who are you meant to be? Because you're already who you're meant to be. And it's just about recognising and um, celebrating that. Recognising who you already are, 
the skills you've got and the gardener, eight intelligent, you're meant to do. What is it that just feels right for you? Who are you on a day when nobody's expecting anything from you? What are the things you do just because you want to do them? They're your things, they're your strengths. The things where people go, oh, wow, that's amazing. Look, we have to Liverpool now. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. How did you do that? And you go, well, it was easy. And you don't think anything of it. You undervalue it. So the next time that you're in your SLT meeting and there is any of this nonsense going on or other people's nonsense that is, by the way, not your shit. You can say stuff if you like. That's my mum's. My mum says, yes, it's not my poo. I know, Pamela, it's not my poo. <laughs> it's not the same, but... So when that happens, that you stand firm and you think to yourself, this is me, this is who I'm meant to be. I'm doing the best I can and it's blooming well good enough, you know? I might want to learn more. I might want to do more. I, want, I might want to change something. But this is me, this is who I'm meant to be, this is what I'm good at. So I want you to make a little pledge. What's the one thing you're going to try and do a little more of as a result of this? And I don't want you to think about what you're going to do less of because what you focus on you get more of. So if you try not to think about cake, can you see what happens? <laughs> Bit of a problem there. So you might want to focus on congratulating yourself more, having a little time each afternoon to say, what's gone well today? Or perhaps before you fall asleep, you'll sleep better. Instead of what haven't I done and what can I beat myself up about, just switch it to what's gone well today? What are the good things I can focus on? What are the kind things I could say to myself? So make a pledge to do that in your head right now. And hopefully, if um, you <coughs> access any of my free resources, there'll be little nudges. Because it's a bit like having a bath, really. This whole thing about feeling good about who you are and feeling strong and positive and resilient, it's a bit like having a bath. You don't kind of, January 1st, go, right, so I've had my bath, I'm done for the year. Well, I think if you did do that, we'd probably have noticed by now. Um, but, uh, but you keep doing it. You have a bath, you have a shower, you have a quick wash, you know. You do whatever it is. And you keep doing it. And it's the same with feeling good about who you are, feeling strong and confident and stress-free. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep checking in with yourself. What am I saying to myself today? How amazing am I today? How fabulous am I? So you've each hopefully got a sticky star. Have you got a sticky star? Yeah? Okay, fantastic. Now, you can stick it where you like, really. <laughs> Not meant to be rude. But I want you to think of somewhere you could stick it that you'll see it on a regular basis. It might be your phone, your diary, the uh, visor you pull down in the car, your bedside uh, cabinet or your bathroom mirror. Put it wherever you like, somewhere you'll keep seeing it. And every time you see it, I want you to remember how amazing you are and think of something that you've done that's gone well, something good about you in that moment. And if you're kind of, you know, yeah, but this is wrong and that's gone pear-shaped and I haven't finished that, there will still be something good. Every single moment of every single day, there's something good. Even if it's, I quite like my toenails, you know, find something. Because you are someone truly amazing. When you have a little bit of doubt and you think, really? Then that's what the R stands for. Yes, you're someone truly amazing. Really, 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 you really are. So it's um, been absolutely incredible spending this time with you. I've got a million and one things that I'd like to tell you in addition to the things that we've done today and to go deeper into that. So hopefully um, we'll stay in contact in one way or another and I can give you free resources to, to keep you in there. And I will picture in my mind's eye that you'll be in that next SLT meeting going, yeah, I am a school business leader. I feel strong. I feel powerful and I know I'm who I'm meant to be. So thank you for having me. I hope that you now take good care of your absolutely amazing selves. Thank you. Thanks Pam, that was just great. I'm sure we all enjoyed that. Some real things to think about. Um,